Kumostov proving grounds really became the key weapons testing grounds around the 1870 and before World War I, both the huge 420mm giant howitzer and the world's first 37mm anti-tank gun was tested here. And I always loved this photo from the late 1800s from Kumostov with the Fahrpanzer sitting in the foreground, remember that from Fort Mutzig. After the Treaty of Versailles, Germany tested weapons here in secrecy, testifying to just how large this area truly is. Large lattice masts were erected to test the velocity of these projectiles, and it was always a place where heads of state would visit and observe testing of new weapons. Hitler was here frequently, both to see new weapons and of course the rocket engine tests. Throughout the war he was always very interested in the latest developments. Even propaganda minister Goebbels would visit here, yet neither of the two men would actually ever visit Peenemünde. New and old tanks were tested here and used as targets. The giant tiger and the even larger giant mouse was built and tested here, as well as Russian and Allied tanks were tested and used for target practice. The truth about Kumostov is that we are not entirely sure what was actually tested here over the years. Much of the documentation have disappeared and of course the Russians destroyed many buildings after the war but yet still many structures, bunkers and remains remains today and we wanted to visit some of the artillery targets today and especially some of the specifically designed and tested bunkers that was constructed here to test how well they would withstand various munitions. Some of them I do not recognize, I've not seen from post-war during wartime construction but maybe you do so let's have a look and see if you recognize something I don't. So sad when it's blown up. <laughs> I mean, when we're a large artillery firing range and there's a large crater in the ground, or a lot of them, at least there's no doubt what it is. So these were the targets for the long artillery range. Yeah, this is this is the back. Maybe it comes not through the wall, but the energy blows the back. And what makes artillery so impressive 100 years ago was that they could hit targets far, far away without all the modern aids we have today of GPS and satellites that will calculate the exact elevation, windage, wind, powder solution in order to hit a target within yards. I don't know why there's hay in it. Apparently the dog is enjoying this whole... <laughs> She's having fun. I mean, it's impressive that they can hit something this small. It's about the size of a tank, I guess. From this far away. Over some of the next month, I will show you exactly how advanced guns, artillery, weapons, projectiles, missiles actually were during World War II, because there were far more technology we're using today that started right then, and much of it was tested right here. It is impressive yeah? that they can hit it from this far away. So they would probably pick up the projectiles afterwards for analysis. So we won't find any back here. That probably is. Where's the... Uh, there's an impact? Where's the impact? There must be more than one. 
there's one down there. Don't know what that is. Don't know. It was a. Here he says. Oh, there you are. <laughs> like here, where? Yeah, maybe the impact came from there. I don't know. Well, I mean, look here. Look. Wow. This all. I mean, it does look like exit. This could be exit. These cables are stronger than these other. Yeah, that's bigger than regular rebar. Yeah, there's no hole through here, so this must have been from here, but... I mean, that does make sense, shooting from down there, from the other side. But it's interesting that the rebar is blown out, since usually the impact hole is smaller. Of course, if this was straight on explosives, explosive shells. But I almost think you wouldn't fire it, well... Yeah, I guess you would fire explosive shell. you fire everything, both explosive and non-explosive. Yeah, I mean, if you look, if you look at that, that. It's a German Wunderwaffe talking <laughs> Or somebody bent this. No. With a uh, tractor. Yes. There is one type of munitions I have seen that will do this kind of damage. The Richeling shell that was tested in various calibers. We will see that a lot more in coming episodes. So, I mean, so you have like five shots on one and then you have to start shooting at the other one. Because then it's pretty much broken. You would think, I mean, you can't repair this. Well, I guess that you can repair this, but... I mean, they wouldn't live forever. Looks nice. <laughs> Imagine repair this here, this new concrete. Yeah, and new rebar yeah, bended in and... New you, uh, bricks, white bricks. You can't repair this. So you would have to fire on it until you can... Well, I, mean, I guess you can fire on it until it's destroyed. Well, this is pretty much what Kummersdorf was for. It was for testing artillery. To do that, you need to build bunkers. Here you are. If you ever wondered what an artillery range was for, that is what it was for. You have large things shooting smaller things at bigger things and destroying them. Taking measurements, doing it again, until you have the perfect combination of complete destruction factor. And uh, I, I'm seeing holes from every direction. Uh, okay, and that one is completely... Those are the same sizes that we saw, but here you have impacts from this direction. So they would shoot at these from both directions. Actually, they would shoot at these from every direction. So they would literally shoot from the outside on all four sides. <laughs> like I said, you shoot on it until there's nothing more to shoot at. And when it's destroyed, you move on to the next.
Oh wow. <laughs> I'll send you a screenshot of that. <laughs> yeah, something is uh, melting out. Asphalt? So they filled it with... What did they fill it with? I don't know, I mean, it could be tar. Yeah, yeah it smells like tar. Yeah. So you have a hollow... Oh, but wait a minute, that's interesting because you have tar in the middle of two walls, which would be worth testing penetration. Or catch the projector. It's on the other side. Yeah, was, there's a hollow space in here. And it's just interesting that it shows from all directions. Hollow. Must be catch fire and then burnt and then comes out. I mean, it was certainly, whatever went through here would have gone through here hot enough that the kinetic energy would melt whatever was around the, for, for at least for, for long enough for it to come out. But you see, you see, all this is melted tar that has run out. So they wanted to do something that would either that or simulate the hollow space. My first commanding officer was an artillerist. I will ask him. he would love to have been here I'm pretty sure these looks relatively intact and these looks a lot less intact put, put it mildly and you see around the ground here you have impacts for things that missed the targets lots of craters But somehow you have the impression that they didn't miss much. That one said the end is longer. We're back to being fascinated by destruction. This is pretty much what this is all about, is how to dismantle things using high explosives and fast moving projectiles. It's so nice to not do this alone for a day. Get shown around by great guys and a cute puppy dog. That definitely makes my birthday. Wow. How to dismantle things with explosives. And then when you miss, you get this. I would gladly spend weeks just wandering around here at Kumostov and look at the different bunkers and targets and buildings. And I think I will, whenever time permits. Artillery targets here and everywhere else would be built for several reasons. One, in order to improve the gunnery so gunners could actually hit targets far, far away. Others would test the munitions in order to determine the penetration of the various bunkers that was as good as they could build them back in the day. They would also test the enemy bunkers and try to use their spies to find out exactly how the French or the Czechs or anyone else around them had built their forts. This one is really interesting because the layers of brick and metal resembles vaguely something I've seen World War I, but it's very hard to determine with no information. What we're looking at here is what could very well be a World War I test stand because of the bricks and the metal. This looks very different, which 
makes it rather interesting. So they have, have stimmt schön festes Stahl. So this is just these are just pieces that are inserted in between the bricks. Yeah. What an interesting way of I mean no building is built that way. And the angle is strange, huh? How many you build bricks one after one and these are I mean, would this be a way of how you would build forts with interlocking bricks? Maybe they can take more force. Yeah? When yeah. here is an impact, they shift each other away to the side. Yeah. I just wonder if this is inspired by a fortification of some sort that is built this way. I mean, I don't know who built fortifications. Yeah, me too. It, it's, it's different. Because when we get to the back, it looks it looks the same as all the other ones. Very interesting. Okay, this is a very large hole. Again, it's very hard to film craters. and really get the perspective right. Oh, eh. you don't want to do that. You do, eh. It's messy and has cordite. What is this besides the drinking bowl for the dog? Was it? Aber was was war das? Ein Rundstand? Oh, and oh, Sicherheit für no one's going to sit here. This is interesting. And here you have tubes in the wall. Either for communication or for water, you have the pipes here. You have pipes running in the wall here. And there's another room on the other side. So would this be an observation bunker for people would be? This is interesting. Well, I saw that at at um, uh, Alte Lager, Altes Lager. At the push stand there, there was also a heavy bunker where people would sit and watch in the middle of the uh, of the artillery range. Yeah, you know, yeah. This is corrugated. What? This is corrugated. This is a. <laughs> yeah, nothing. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, it's okay. Um, yeah. Corrugated iron is like ri rippled. You would use this for a roof in France. Ah, yeah, weiblich. Yeah. Weiblich. Look, there's a big heavy rock I can go under. <laughs> well, so, this must have been obviously for testing how to destroy bunkers. I wonder if this was one of the positions they tested before the invasion of, of the invasion of Yugoslavia that never happened. Because they built bunkers that looked like the Czech bunkers to test fire on. Oh. This had a round, I think that, huh. And this large wall with explosion next to it. I mean, what? This must have been where they tested on actual bunkers. They actually built bunkers like like ours or the Czechs.
there's a little bit of rebar, but okay, that's different. What do you got in there? Hollow. Just a hollow building. Underground? Yeah. I mean, the only reason you would build this is because you want either to test. This has the same shape as the French underground uh, shelters. Or they were testing to fire on, their, on the German type. But this is, they actually built these bunkers with a meter rebar to test, shoot at them. Be older, I don't know. I mean, th th this could be World War I, because they yeah. used the, the rounded half dome of corrugated iron. And it cracked the roof. This is very interesting because uh, these are these are deliberately built for testing this type of facility. I think this is built to test the penetration of the shelter on this type of a bunker facility more so than the shell or different shell impacts on reinforced underground shelters. Otherwise they wouldn't build them like this. But if you look at this slab, or this, I mean, I guess there's a hook maybe to lift the plate into place. That's interesting. Um, this whole heavy roof looks like. What's this doing? What's this doing? Under the. Well, I mean, that's interesting. But what's interesting is this is interesting. That's kind of what I'm... Clara Filipovic. Clara Filipovic. Ruhe Städte. Clara Filipovic. Sie sitzt hier unter der Betonplatte. I mean, why would anybody have gotten killed here? Of all places. This is really, really interesting. I think they built these bunkers here to test penetration of various shells on underground fortifications. And I know they were testing against various bunkers leading up to the expected invasion of Czechoslovakia that didn't happen and of course then that of France. Then we got flat corrugated metal. Or a flat metal. And the flat metal poles are twisted instead of the regular round rebar. We see lots of ground impacts here. Very, very interesting. Very interesting area. It's hollow. Yeah. How can it be hollow? Oh, well, just loose. It's just loose. Okay. 
yeah, this is uh, the root piece of whatever this was. This would be an interesting research project to see what exactly did they test here and test for. It is. I uh, GPSed it so we can find it again. Yeah, and you see hole after hole. Yeah. I think they were te testing ground penetrating weaponry here. Look at the flat rebar inside of the round. Yeah, th I mean this is this area is full of uh, impact craters. Okay, we're on a shooting artillery shooting range, so pretty much everything looks like a cheese. The Maybach complex, I see a lot of those trees that grows around, and here it is on a shooting range, on a firing range, where technically the tree could have been broken by explosives. And then, but not dead, and then it kept growing. It's very interesting. I, I, I keep finding those trees that are, have a U in the middle. These are different, different test stands. They are. So these are smaller. And nothing have been shot at them. Well, I said that all too soon. Something happened shot at some of them. Ah, they used to shoot at one, maybe two, and then they decided it makes no fun. We must build them bigger. Bigger, bigger yeah, targets yeah. and bigger and bigger cannons. Bigger target, better bend. <laughs> Strange things you'll find in force. So this is where they put up the cameras to watch all the explosives, all the impacts. Fascinating. Okay, so every 500 meters there was one of these to observe the impacts for different ranges. Why did the Russians blow them up? What are they going to do? Das war dieser Befehl nach Krieg, dass alle Bunker gesprengt werden müssen. Ja, ich weiß. Die blind alles kaputt gemacht. And then on a hill, in the middle of the forest, is another observation bunker. It looks different than I thought it would. Observation again. But they would put cameras in here, not people. Uh, I don't know. Well, you had electrical on the walls. You have the woods here in the wall where you would place things and probably a reinforced roof well standing under it I hope it's a reinforced roof it's the small things right it's 
of the place, radios and electronics on the wood dowels in the wall. Yep. And you had a good view from here. I will say. I must go on the roof. I must? Hi puppy dog. Observation bunker, no? Tom, bring light. What are you doing? <laughs> All right. That door is not opening. It's literally just this little room here. It's, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a room, but the door is definitely not going anywhere. You think? Yeah, we have to dig it out, and then it's rusty. It is literally just a little room with ventilation. And you have the ground here, it's all plowed up. There's kind of no observation here. No, this is a generator. Oh, that's, oh the, okay, so that's why there's an air intake. Okay, that makes sense. The generator room. Actually, shell. That's the bottom of that's the bottom of a shell. No, it's no, it's not. It's the Bronx here. Hinter von einem Shell oder ein Granat? Ja, das ist ein Führungsring hier aus Bronze. Das ist nur, ja, das ist formed by the impact. But they are not fired, huh? Normally here are the streak marks. This. Blattwort. Yes. Blattwort. Ah, ja, kann ich auch zeigen. Behind me is Vanna von Braun's first test stand. Down the road is Diebner's nuclear reactor. Over there is the Maginot Line and all its amazing forts. I'm visiting them all and I'm bringing them to you. So I really appreciate you like, follow and share what I'm doing trying to document all these important historical locations. And if you feel like you want to watch more pictures or documents that are used for these, go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out with my travels, because gasoline and travel and air for you is expensive, uh, my PayPal is there, protectionservicein.com. You are more than welcome, but you don't have to. I appreciate all your support and all your help, and I love seeing these locations, and I love bringing them to you.